Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are going to talk about how we can move or migrate the files from network or shared drive to SharePoint Online. So in this regard, I already did the one video a couple of years back and that was like how to get the files from shared network drive to SharePoint Online. So but uh, people ask me about like they are having chunk of files or folders into shared drive and they want to move them efficiently in one go so that later on they can have their power to mate to be plugged in those drives so that whenever a new file comes in then it should be moved automatically so this later part this video suffice the later part but the first part they want to move or migrate the files from shared drive and the files and folder sizes are too big more than 10 gb then they are looking for an efficient way so there could be a couple of ways of doing it so one thing like uh, you can have your any other tool like in place ShareGate or some other tool or some custom utility and the other thing default tool which people may not be aware about because the, these uh, business users who uh, wish to move their content without help of any administrator so they wish to have a one quick solution or efficient solution for them so that's what we are going to talk about today. So in SharePoint by default we have something related to migration. So I open this SharePoint tenant and on the left hand side I could see there is a section for migration. So earlier we used to have our SharePoint migration tool which I can still find at the bottom. So over here you can see like download SharePoint migration tool and from there you can move the content or copy the content from uh, 2010, 2013 and file share as well. And along with that we have something new that is migration manager which help us to move the files from file share to our SharePoint online. So this solution or this way can be done to move the content or the files which are bulk in number. You can go to view task. Over here we have option to download an agent because it requires an agent to connect between your local computer, your Windows machine and to the SharePoint online. So once you download it and install it. So right now I have downloaded that agent and installed it as well. So it says agent connected. That means like while downloading if I go to my download folders and I will rerun that for you so that you can see like what that means. So this is agent setup. So once you install it like it will open this migration manager agent and connect to your tenant. So over here because it's already connected so over here you don't see any connection thing. Uh, once you are doing it for first time it will be asking a tenant address so you can pass on your SharePoint site address. And if I just say unlink a tenant and then we will relink so that will give us a same feeling like we are installing it for the first time. So sign in with SharePoint admin credentials. So I'll do that. I'll sign it to my tenant. And once you're done like this link you can just take your folder which the which can be a shared drive or network drive. So you can just do a test whether this is accessible or not so you have access to this file share so we are good and we can go back to our SharePoint and once agent is connected so over here you see like uh, in the past uh, whatever uh, the migration I did so you can see the uh, analytics for it and when you scroll down you will be finding this option to add a source path and the same option is at the top also add a source path so once you do this specify a single source path and you can specify your shared folder which you wish to migrate so add all subfolders as a source path no i don't wish to do that because i just want this folder to be migrated and it will take care of the entire migration or the subfolders migration automatically but it will add as in source path at once so once you do that and you will just put on automatically scan content so i'll remove it because it's unnecessary takes time so i'll just say add source path so once this source path is added you can see like I have this source path added which is new one and can select it and you can manually do a scan of the content or you can just go to this migration add a task and select a source over here you can specify the source of your file and destination where we where you wish to move the files specify this file so I have this uh, site so my site is already root site I can just click outside it will give me all the document libraries where I wish to migrate so I will choose this migrated file share as my document library just say next I can give it a task so demo migration agent 
and I can run that immediately or I can schedule that run. If I click on this run later, then I can schedule that run. Otherwise, for our demo, we are good. We will run it directly only and preserve file share, sharing permission. So file sharing permission, if your file share is, if you're logged in with your same domain credential, then you can just keep it. Otherwise, if you're moving the content from a disconnected or a different domain, then just keep that unchecked. And finally, we can just do a run. So there like it will queue for the run and waiting for the agent to be available, this one. And once the agent is available, it will start executing your migration task. And once the task is completed, you will find the data moved to your file share. So right now is empty and we will wait like once the task is completed, then we will have our file share data to be available over here. If you're a business user, you can direct, you can request your tenant administration team to do this setup for you so that you can bulk migrate the data in one shot without requesting any custom tool or like relying more on the power automate to look up all the files and then do one by one processing so that's a very much like a cumbersome process so one shot you can just delegate the task to the sharepoint migration agent so once you are done with it then the later part is you can set up your power automate with a on-premise gateway connector once any file is created in that file shared repository for example my repository is this if i create any new file then it should be automatically picked up and created under our migration folder so that we have the data we have the network drive connected to our sharepoint library so that part i can quickly walk through so our migration job is completed and we should have this migration folders created so now you can see i have this migration folder created and the good part is like it keeps the date the file metadata property is intact so i have these folders and if i go inside i will find all my subfolders with files as intact to it so now the next step uh, now i want to have my power to meet which should tie up with my this file share so as soon as the file is created in this location i should have that automatically created into my sharepoint so for that we will start creating one power to meet and the trigger which we are going to use is like file share trigger when a file is created or modified properties. So for that we will be starting with creating one or adding this on-premise gateway. So for that we'll going we'll be going to more options. We will just discover all and under that you will find this gateway options. So just click on this gateway and when you click on new gateway it will download start downloading this gateway install.exe. So once it's downloaded, then you can install that and you can start setting up your on-premise gateway. So I'll just run that from my already installed gateway. So though like I have two gateways created, but for the sake of like how to configure, I'm just showing you the steps. So once you install that on-premise gateway, you will be getting the this status page. Your gateway is all set up and you can sign in. So you have to sign in and use your Microsoft AD account to log in. So once, once it's installed, you will see the gateway is online and you can set up a new gateway as well. So because this is my this existing gateway, so it's connecting directly to it, but you will be prompted with the new gateway. And once you do that, you your gateway will be available into this list, just like mine. And then we will go to our first of all connections. So we can create that, that connection. So I will create a new connection and I will search for file system because we are going to fetch the files from our local or shared folder. So I will just copy this shared folder path, paste it and I am going to use the windows account. And this one, if you are, uh, if your machine and uh, your Microsoft account is on same domain, then you can use them directly. Otherwise, like if you are doing it from a disconnected from a different domain altogether, then you have to provide, you have to just go to your this command prompt and just type in who am I. So it will give you a, your domain plus your name. So you can just use this. And after that, you have to just type in your password. So I can just use my password for my windows and over here, enable gateway. So right now you can select uh, the gateway which you have set up and 
once you create it it will create a new connection so i already have this connection created for myself if i search for file system under the existing connection you will see like i have these two connectors already set created for me so i'll be using these two connectors and now i'll be going to my flows so i'm done with on premise gateway and done with creating a connection so now i can create a instant cloud flow and this one i'll just do skip and i will add my trigger when file is created or modified and over here you can just look for your right connector which is our file system so i'll be just scrolling down to the right group so i'll choose this property now i will tie up to my connector so this connector if i just click on this file system you will see i will have all my root folders over here so right now it's my this migrated file share is my location and this is my root folder and i can just select this root folder or anything inside my this root folder so once you do that you can specify the number of files you should return so skip it to the maximum numbers check for created and modified time yes i need those details and once you do that the trigger is ready and for a better performance efficiency you can just increase this degree of parallelism so that number of files if you are getting then it should handle it properly in an efficient way and then you are done and then we will click get file content so that we can get the file content and so that we can create a file into our sharepoint library so i'll just go to again look up for my this file system i'll say get file content and we are going to select the file from dynamic and we'll just say id of our trigger property trigger file and then we'll just say infer content type as true that's fine and once we get this file content then we can start creating a new file into sharepoint or one drive wherever you want to create so i'll just do this into sharepoint create a file in sharepoint and as we have selected the root folder so i'll be just creating file directly into the root folder so i'll explicitly select it and you know like there is a limitation into this connector that it will only fire to the folder structure level so if you think i am considering i am creating this power automate at this file share level then only files under this file share directly in the root folder then only it will trigger our power automate if i wish to like see the files or create the files under this subfolder then i have to have one more trigger or one more flow into place which can target this folder location try to remember like wherever you want to create your files have those trigger into the right folder and i'll select the sharepoint site to the my root site folder path to the root and name of file i'll take that from dynamic property and file content and now we are done so i'll just save this i'll give it a name i am going to create a file into my this migration folder and i'll just create a test file 12345 and i'll put some content we will wait our power automate to automatically trigger to look for that file as we have set the trigger to that particular folder on our this shared drive or network drive so it should look it up and we will see the our flow triggered in a moment so our flow triggered and when we go inside it got the file content and created a file into sharepoint so we can go back to our root folder and we will see this test file which we have created just now so limitation is we have to have this triggers rightly placed on the folders if i wish to have files notified under this folder then i have to have my power automate targeted to this folder if i wish to have files under this folder i wish to i can change the trigger to target to my this folder structure so this works well like if we are having a very limited folder structures 4 5 then you can have 4 5 power automates in place but when you have 100 more than 100 200 folders and you wish to like make a power automate which should listen to any of the file created in the subfolders then this is this could be challenging this cannot be done so just be sure like what problem statement or problem scenarios you are looking at and as i said 
to start with if you wish to migrate or move all your content in one shot then we have this SharePoint migration agents which are by default no custom tool is required and that once the task migration task is created you will find all your folders moved into SharePoint repository and very simple and very straightforward and later on then you can just have your power to meet to listen to those any new file created. So that is it for today's video. If you have any further questions, I feel free to drop your comment. I'll try to answer. Thank you.